Hey everyone, in this module we're going to be talking about the doubly linked list. Now this is an extension of the basic linked list that we talked about last week. In the basic linked list, you have each node containing one link to the next node in the list, which contains a link to the next node in the list, and so on and so forth, until you get to the last node. Likewise, in the basic link list that we talked about last week, we had one reference to the beginning of the list that we used to kind of like get things started. In this version of a link list, there's a few problems that we talked about at the end of last week. One of which is that there's no real way to like loop through the link list backwards, which we might sometimes want to do. Also, there's no way to append to the end without going all the way through it to find the last node and then stick an item on there we'd in theory like to be able to append to the list more quickly and easily. And likewise, doing some things like removing nodes was a bit awkward because when you're at a given node, there's no way to know what node is previous to this one in the sequence. So this version of the linked list that we're going to talk about today is the doubly linked list. This fixes all of those problems by doing two different things. One, we keep track of not only where the start of the list is, but also where the end of the list is as well. So you can go right to the front or right to the back. And then the other big change is that inside of each node, we're going to store not just a link to the next node in the sequence, but a link to the previous node in the sequence as well, which is why it's called a doubly linked list. We have two links going backwards and going forwards. So this is going to make the linked list better in some ways because we're going to be able to loop through it backwards and we're going to be able to add to the end much more easily, but it's also going to be slightly more complicated. So let's go ahead and start talking about what doubly linked lists look like. All right, so here we have a picture of a singly linked list, which is what the kind of linked list we talked about last week is called, a singly linked list. Now, as you can see, we have the things we talked about last time. We have the head, which is referencing the first node in the list, and then each node references the next node in the sequence until finally the last node's next reference refers to null. Now, here's what we're going to do to turn this into a doubly linked list, which is today's topic. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new reference called the tail, just like we have head referring to the first thing in the list, the tail refers to the last thing in the list. So we'll have tail refer to the 45 node like this. Then the other change we're going to make is we're going to have each node refer back to the previous node in the sequence like this. So now each node box has three things in it. It has the data we're storing, it has the link to the next node in the sequence, and then it has the link to the previous node in the sequence as well. Just like the last node's next reference refers to null because there is no next node, the first node's previous reference also refers to null. So now this is a picture of a doubly linked list. All right, now let's take that sort of concept of the doubly linked list and turn to our code and see what changes we're going to have to make. Okay, so I've opened up a file in Vim called doublelist.java, and I've put into it the basics of our singly linked list from last time. Now let's talk about what needs to change. Inside of our node class, in addition to storing the data that the node is keeping track of, and the next field, which is the link to the next node in the sequence, we also oops, need to go ahead and add a reference to the previous field, which I'm just going to abbreviate PREV. The next thing we need to do is, in addition to storing the head of the list, which is the reference to the very first node, we are going to go ahead and store the tail node as well. And now inside of the constructor, in addition to setting the head to null, we're going to set the tail to null as well. So in terms of our like data that's being stored inside of the class, that's all we need to do to take this from being the singly linked list to the doubly linked list. Now the next thing to talk about, I think, is how to add nodes to the list. We had basically two ways of doing this with our singly linked list. We had the simple way of adding to the start of the list, which was easy because we know right where the head node is. 
And then we had adding to the end of the list, which was hard because we don't know where the end of the list is. We had to loop through with a while loop to get where we're going. Let's go ahead and work on add first, which I'm gonna rename, I don't know, add start, just to make this a little bit simpler. And this one can be add end. So let's go ahead back to the whiteboard and think about if and what is going to have to change to get this add start method to work. Because right now we only talk about next and head. It seems like we're gonna have to deal with the tail and the prev in here as well. All right, so here's our link list that we drew in the beginning of this. Let's talk about how we're going to go about adding a new node to the beginning of the list. Well, the first thing that we're gonna have to do, just like before, is to actually make the node. Because until we do that, we can't really do much of anything. That will cause us to draw this box here and it will look like this. And the next thing while we're thinking about it is we can go ahead and set the data. So whatever data is supposed to be stored in here, I don't know, let's say we're adding the number three, we can go ahead and put that into place. The rest of this is basically fixing up the arrows so that the arrows from eight point back to three, the arrow from three points to eight, and so on and so forth. So there's basically four arrows I think we have to change. Three's next field, three's previous field, eight's previous field, and the head link itself. Now, some of these, the order matters, and some of them it doesn't. We're gonna do head last though, because if we do head right now and set head to be the new node, then we'll have lost this whole thing. And I guess we could ha would have to loop through backwards from the tail, but that's the whole thing we don't, we don't wanna do and we wanna avoid. So apart from doing head last, I don't think the order matters too much. So the thing we can do next though, is set the node's next field to head. That will point this next field here to this one. And then after that, we can set the node's previous field to null, of course, because if we're inserting this at the beginning, there is going to be no node previous to this. So we're gonna set this one to null. Next, we're going to set heads previous to the new node we just made, which is gonna change this field here. Instead of pointing at null, it's going to point back to the new node that we just added. And then finally, the last step is we can set head equal to the new node we just created, which is going to make it look like this. And so now I think everything is right. Head now refers to the three node. There's nothing before the three, it's pre points to null. Three's next points to eight, which was the old head. Eight's pre points back to three. I think everything else about this is right. So that's the basic algorithm. Let's go ahead and start translating that into code so we can see what it'll look like. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and make a new node just like we've done before and set it equal to a new node object. We're going to set the data inside of there to be whatever item is passed into the add start method. We can set new nodes next field equal to the current head, new nodes previous field equal to null. Then we can set head's previous field, right, to the new node we just created. And then we can finally set head equal to the new node that we just created as well. Now the order of these really, really matters, right? Because head prev being set equal to new node is the old head, and then this line changes it to be the new head. So again, the order of some of these is important. So this code is all that it takes most of the time to add a new node to the beginning of the link list. There's only one problem with this method as we have it right now, which is when you have a link list that actually starts out empty. So as a side note, this is kind of how I like to code. I like to sort of handle the common case first and sort of write your method or algorithm to handle the most common case first, because that's what's usually going to happen and that's what the problem you have to solve first, and then start thinking about common cases and think about how you can go ahead and modify 
your algorithm that you've already come up with to deal with sort of edge cases like what if the list is empty and what if you know there's only one item and start seeing if it works for those cases and if not how you could fix it because sometimes it feels just overwhelming if you have to deal with like all the possible scenarios you could run into i like to start with one and then sort of add the other ones on once you have something to work off of so let's go ahead and see what it looks like if we have an empty linked list which would look like this there we go an empty linked list has head referencing null and prev referencing null as well so let's see if these steps work first of all and if not what we have to do to fix them so the first step is to make a node that'll draw the little box second step is to set the data we'll go ahead and put the three in there again set node.next to head is our next step and that one actually works just fine if you look we're going to set this one equal to what head currently is which is null which is what it actually should be equal to likewise Setting node.prev to null, step four is fine too. That makes it look like this. Step six would actually be okay as well. Setting head equal to this node would be fine, but this one here is problematic. Setting head.prev equal to node is gonna be a problem because head is null, and so if we try to reference head.prev, it's going to give us the null pointer exception thing. So step five we have to deal with. Let's go ahead and do step six though. If we do step six and say head is equal to node, that'll look like this. Head referencing this node, which is correct. So now we have two problems basically. One is that step five here would crash the program with a null pointer exception. And the other problem is that prev is pointing to null even though we now have something in the list. So what we really need to do is instead of the step five that we have here, we need to have a case. We need to say, if prev is equal to null that would mean that there is currently nothing in the list in that case what we have to do is we should set previous equal to node the new node that we just created otherwise if there's at least one thing in the list then we can go ahead and set head.prev oops i'm so sorry that's not prev that's tail ah likewise this is tail here as well my bad, my bad. All right, so an empty list has tail being equal to null. And so if we have that case where the list is empty, instead of setting head.prev equal to this node, we're gonna get, go ahead and set tail to that node instead. Otherwise, if there's at least one thing in the list, then we can set head's previous link equal to the new node that we just created. So in code, that would look like this. Basically, we're gonna say, if the tail of the list is equal to null, meaning there is not any nodes in there at all, we're gonna set tail equal to this new node that we created. Otherwise, there's at least one thing, so we can set head.prev to new node. And either way, we set head to the new node as well. So let's go ahead and see how that works for our empty list scenario. Okay, so let's roll through this and see that this works. So now we have an empty list. Step one, make a node. Step two, put in the data. Step three, set node next equal to head. That's fine, head is null, so we set it like that. Step four, set node previous to null. That's gonna be fine too, that makes it look like this. Now step five, if prev is null, I wrote it wrong again, one sec. There we go, if tail is null, then we have an empty list so we set tail equal to new node that'll look like this tail now pointing down here then step six head equals new node that looks like this head now refers down to this new node so it works in this case when there's no items in the list and it correctly makes our doubly linked list with only one node in it like this now, I think this will work with one node, but let's run through it one more time just to see this else clause here and make sure that everything works when there's only one node in the list. So we're adding something new to the beginning. So we go ahead and follow step one, make a new node, and then put in the data. Let's say the number two is going to be put in. Then we set node next equal to head. Head is node three, so node next is gonna link here. Then we set node prev to null, That'll look like this. 
then we are on step five. If tail equals null, but it's not null now, tail refers to a valid node, node three. So we do the else clause and set head.prev equal to this node. So that's going to change this one right here, the previous coming off of three to point back to our two node instead. That's what step five there is going to do. And then in step six, we set head equal to node, which will do this. It'll link head down to this new node that we just made. And so at the end of that head, it looks a little messy because it's like not in order, but head refers to the first node now, which is node two. There's nothing before that node, it's previous points to null. The thing after that is three, the thing before three is two, and three's next is still null, tail still points down here. So this all seems to work perfectly whether there's zero nodes, one node, or more nodes inside of our link list. So the code as we have it here should work, adding an item to the beginning of the list. Now it's a little bit more complicated than adding a node to the beginning of a singly linked list because now we have tails to worry about and previouses to worry about, but we still don't have to do any looping. If you think about it, no matter how big the list is, we're still gonna take the same number of steps to add at the beginning. We're doing the same fixed number of things. We don't have to loop through the list at all. And that wasn't the case for adding to the end of a singly linked list. We did a, some looping down here and so now let's talk about how we do this with our doubly linked list. All right, so say we have a doubly linked list like this, and now instead of adding to the beginning, we want to add to the end. Let's think about what steps have to happen. Well, just like before, we have to make a new node. So let's go ahead and do that. Make a new node. And also just like before, we have to put the data in, right? If we forget to do that, making our list will be kind of a waste of time. So let's say we're storing, I don't know, the number 30 inside of this new node. Now again, just like before, there's basically four links we have to fix. The new nodes next and prev, the previous, the last node rather, the tails next, and then also the tail itself. And like before, some of the order isn't super important, but some is. So let's go ahead and next set the new node that we just made previous to tail. That'll go ahead and link this previous link back to the last node in the sequence like this. Then, just like before, we can set the new nodes next just to null. That'll go ahead and point this down here at null. Next, on step five, what we should do is we should set the tails next to point to this new node. So we can do that, we can say tail.next points equal to the new node that we just created. That'll make it look like this. I'm gonna draw this like this. It doesn't really matter where the thing comes in on, but I'm gonna draw it in at the end so it looks right. And then finally, we have one last thing to do, which is to set the tail to the new node that we just created which will make it look like this. And so that seems to work. Just like last time, we're gonna have a special case when the list was empty, but let's start by going ahead and putting this code in and see what happens. So just like before, we have to make a node, which again, I'll just call new node, equals to a newly created node object. Just like before, we put in the data, which is the item that's passed into this constructor. And then we set new node prev equal to the tail and new node dot next equal to null. Then we're going to go ahead and set, as I said on the whiteboard, tail dot next equal to this new node that we created and then tail itself equal to the new node as well. Oops. Here I called it new node, like that. Hopefully that makes some sense. But now as we switch back over here, let's go ahead and consider the case where we have an empty linked list to begin with and see what has to change. Well, if we have a linked list like this, we're gonna do step one, make a node. Step two, put the data in, whatever that is. Step three, set node.prev to tail. That's actually fine because tail is null, and so that works. 
set node.next to null is fine as well. Again, step five causes us a problem though, because set tail.next is going to access the next field of a null pointer, which gives us the null pointer exception thing that you've all seen before. Step six though, just like before is actually fine. Set tail to node is okay. That'll make this happen. That's fine. The only problem again is step five. And instead of accessing tail.next when tail was a null pointer, we instead need to first check if it was null like this. If tail doesn't equal null, that's our normal case where we can go ahead and set tail.next equal to node. But if it is null, then that means that we have an empty list and instead we should be setting head equal to node. So that we're gonna do that instead of this basic step five here. That'll fix the problem where it doesn't work when you have an already empty list. So let's go back to the code and put that in. Okay, so what did I say? I said, if head is equal to null, I think I said it the other way around in the algorithm, but we'll go ahead and do it this way for reasons that'll be clear in a sec. If the head is equal to null, then we need to set the head equal to the new node like that. Otherwise, if it's not null, then we have our sort of normal case where we do this and set tail.next equal to the new node. So that then is our completed algorithm for this method adding to the end of the linked list. Now there's something interesting if we compare these two, the add an item to the beginning and add an item to the end. They're actually sort of like mirror images of each other. They're like perfectly symmetrical, except everything in this first one here, if I go ahead and replace all of the nexts with preves and the preves with nexts and the heads with tails and the tails with heads, you would get exactly this other code over here as it appears in this add end method. So like if you look at it, first lines are the same, second line's the same, third line is the same, except this one over here says node next equals head, and this one says node prev equals tail. Same thing here, node next equals null or node prev equals null. Same thing with this if else statement, except we're checking the opposite thing, right? The head instead of the tail and the tail instead of the head. And that should make sense because if you think about it, when we add it to the end or to the beginning of the linked list, we're doing exactly the same thing. It's just what we're calling it, whether we called it the head or the tail and the preview or the next. So hopefully those algorithms make sense. You can go through a couple more examples on pencil and paper if it's still a little fuzzy and you can really verify why it's working. But otherwise, that's all for today. In the next part of this module on doubly linked list, we'll tackle how do you remove an item from the linked list, which we haven't gotten to yet. So I'll see you for that.